back to our creative videos. My name is Loretta Hayes and I'm from Hayes Sewing Machine Company in Wilmington, Delaware. And today we're going to do another edition of our tool school. And so today we're going to be talking about wonder clips and magic clips. So Pam's going to pan down to the table and we're going to show you some of the possibilities. So the original uh, wonder clip uh, has been available for quite some time. Um, it is a plastic clip that has a metal spring that is quite strong. So no matter what you uh, are pinning together or clipping together, it will stay together very easily. Uh, the Wonder Clip comes in a variety of packaging. So you can get simply uh, 10 Wonder Clips if you're doing a small project. Uh, you can get a container that has 50 Wonder Clips in it, and it has kind of the not nice storage box. And if you are a Wonder Clip fanatic, uh, so thinking, you know, I'm doing king size, queen size quilts, and I'm doing my binding, and I want to clip them all the way around, uh, they also do it in a hundred pack. So why would you use a uh, Wonder Clip? And basically, the answer to that is any place that you would use a pin, you can use a clip. But there are certain places where pinning becomes an issue and the Wonder Clip really shows its stuff. So if you're doing um, bags where we have like the foam inside the bag, oftentimes you're gonna find that you bend your pins going up through your fabric and through the, the foam. And so you'll see that with the Wonder Clip, you can simply go in those thicker items. You're not bending up all your pins uh, and they will hold super, super well. Things to, be, to know about the clip is the clip has a flat side and a round side. And so it is intended for you to put the flat side down so that as you're stitching along on your sewing machine, uh, it's gonna be a nice flat, it's not gonna kind of bump over and you can remove your clips as you're going. But what oftentimes people don't realize is that there are markings at the bottom of the clip. So you'll see that there's two markings going along on the side, okay? And so the first marking, the one closest to the spring is actually a quarter of an inch. Okay, so if you're in a situation like this, where we have triangles coming together, so these are two snowball blocks, and so we're coming in and we are going to go ahead and we're gonna line that up. And we would really like these points to look nice and clean. So what we do is we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna line her up, we're going to place the clip on, but we're going to look at it from the back side. So I'm lining up so that that quarter inch line is lining up right along the edge of my fabric. And we'll do the same on the other one here. And by lining it up right on that quarter inch line, when we open it up, we can see if we need adjustment. So you see on this one, this one's perfect, but how often do you sew it and you get one of these kind of things where the point is shifted off? So you can simply come in before you stitch it so that you don't have to do anything uh, seam rippering wise. You can shift that, get that lined up exactly the way you would like it. At that point, we're going to flip our clips over so that we can stitch with the flat side facing down. So lovely, lovely clips. And really, any place where you might uh, maybe leave a hole in a project. So let's say you're doing some vinyl work. You're going to put a little vinyl pocket on a bag. If you pin it, you're going to leave a hole. And so having the clips are just fabulous. You can come in. You can clip your pieces and no holes. So things like vinyl, leather, cork, all of those uh, fabrics really probably should be clipped rather than pinned. So that is the Wonder Clip. But that's not all. <laughs> 
Sounds familiar. <laughs> so sometimes you are pinning. So a common place where I am clipping is the, the clips on the um, binding of my quilt. But you'll get into a certain section here where you've got your miter. And so the miter, when you're doing this, you'll find that your clips get in each other's way. So you're coming in like this and you're coming in like that and they're kind of awkward. And so they have created the mini clip. And so the mini clip is like the, the wonder clip, but it has a much uh, more tapered point. On the back of the markings here, they have eighth inch markings still. Uh, and you can still do the, the quarter inch if you would like. But typically I'm using these mini clips for an area where I can come in and I can clip and my clips are not going to get into each other's way. So super, super cool things with the clips. The other thing that I do, and I do this with the regular wonder clip, I just forgot to mention it. You could do it with a mini clip is if you're doing things where you have stacks of squares that you've uh, you've cut for your project. So this is a little uh, pre-done stack, but oftentimes I have triangles and rectangles and all those kinds of things. You can use them for organization, clipping them together, maybe putting a little tab on there saying that this is A, this is B on your particular quilt panel. All right. So that are the, those are the wonder clips and by the way they do make a jumbo clip as well so if you're doing organization and you have lots and lots of blocks <laughs> you could like with a jumbo clip you could pin everybody you could uh, clip everybody together now in a more sewing related rather than a quilting related i often will use what they refer to as the magic clip so the magic clip comes in three sizes. So it comes in a big size, small size, and an extra small size. So the size of the, the, the difference is going to be the height of what you can clamp and the width of the metal piece. So I'm using today the extra small clips and what I've done is I've set up a sample that you'll see oftentimes in sewing where maybe you're doing a shirt tail hem or the front of a, you know, say like a jacket and it's got the curve on here. And so that becomes really difficult to do without getting it choppy on the back. So typically if I'm doing a curve like that, how I deal with it, and we, we've done it with dark thread so that you can see it on the camera, but what I will do is I'll sew at a normal stitch length where I want my curve to be. We're gonna roll the curve just a little, the stitching just a little bit to the back so it's not gonna show on the front. But that's not the critical thing. The next thing is what do you do with all of this rumpled fabric? So inside that seam allowance, we ran a basting stitch so that we could pull up on the basting and take some of that slack out of our, our curve. And now we have this nice flat curve without a bunch of pleats and tucks going across it. So the problem with this is as you're sewing on the bias, things tend to do a little more shifting. So the wonder clips are fabulous, but you're pulling those clips off before you start stitching. That is what the magic clips do differently. So what the magic clips do is they come in and they will clip onto the edge of your project. So if we're stitching an eighth of an inch in, I wanna make sure that my clip is going to be back a little bit from that stitching line. So we go ahead and we clip our curve. And now we can come in and we can sew right next to the clip without having to take the clip off. So the presser foot will ride right over the magic clip um, and so we're just going to be stitching to, I'm looking at it from my perspective, so to the right of the, the clip uh, from your perspective. So magic clips are meant to be left on as you're stitching 
wonder clips are meant to be removed as you're stitching. So I hope this helps with your sewing needs. Remember the clips can be used all the time, any place that you'd use pins, but particularly areas that are thick, so like foam or uh, areas where fabric might leave a hole, like vinyl or cork. Um, and then if you need to be able to leave that clip on, then what you want is a magic clip as opposed to a wonder clip. So I hope this video is helpful and we'll see you next time.